Greetings, uh, fellow engineering students. Uh, welcome once again to our third lesson for Engineering Science and 3. We are still on friction. Uh, my name is Mr. C. Tobejane from Etlanzeni TV College, Mlumati Campus. As we know, well, we always deal with friction up until we reach to the conclusion of it. Still on friction, last time we spoke about an inclined plane. This object sliding freely on an inclined plane. Object moves up and down. We said that we have components perpendicular to the plane and we have components which are parallel to the plane. We also looked at the calculations of such components. But today, with regards to friction, I want us to look at oblique forces. When we speak about an oblique force, we speak of that force which can be applied to an object at a certain direction, but then the object moves at a different direction. So in actual fact, it means that this force which is applied to that particular uh, object is an indirect force. Oblique forces are also known as indirect forces. Where do we find such uh, forces in, in, in practice? Maybe for an example, when you are pushing a, a trolley in a shopping mall. You see, when you push a trolley, you actually exert your force at a certain angle, right? You don't actually uh, ex exert your force at horizontal, but you exert it at a certain angle and yet the trolley will move in a horizontal direction. So this means that an oblique force is an indirect force that is applied to an object and the results are such that the object will move on a different direction. Now, here we have uh, the different scenarios of oblique forces, uh, more particularly on a horizontal plane. We have the first one for pulling. What happens when you pull an object, right? Here's you, just the rough sketch. Here's yourself here. You see yourself here. You are not very good in drawing. You are pulling this object. You are pulling this object. You are pulling this object. Maybe you have your goods here. You have your goods here and this object like that. So you are pulling this object. When you are pulling this object, Look at this. This is the force of pulling. You see where it's facing. It is facing a certain direction. It's acting at an angle with the horizontal. So if we take this force, that is our force F, this force, that is the force in which you are pulling this object upon. It's acting at a certain angle from the horizontal. But where is this trolley moving or where is this uh, carrier moving? It's moving horizontally. It's moving in that direction, right? It's moving in that direction. So you're actually applying a force at a certain direction, and yet this object moves on a different direction. You see that? But then again, we also have, all right, so it's acting at an angle alpha. We don't name that angle theta, but we name it angle alpha. This is the angle that exists between the horizontal and the pulling force. Now, again, since you are pulling this object, it is logic that when you are pulling something, there is a certain weight which is subtracted from it than when you are pushing. See, when you are pushing something, you are actually exerting weight. When you are pulling, in short, you are subtracting the weight. So, how are you subtracting the weight? Weight is always where? Weight is always vertically down. How do you subtract the weight? It means you are slightly pulling the object up. So this is the force which is exerted, which is applied on this object, but we have two more forces that act on the object. These forces are F sine alpha, F cos alpha. Cos alpha for horizontal movement, that is where the object you are expecting it to move, and sine alpha, that is the what? the vertical movement. This is what happens when you are pulling this object, right? Now, if you can remember carefully, under a normal circumstance, under normal circumstance, when you have an object on a horizontal plane, we said that 
the weight of the object will be equal to the normal reaction. We said that the weight of the object will be equal to the normal reaction. Normal reaction is equal to weight. But when you are pulling this object now, when you are pulling this object now, it means that you have subtracted F sine alpha from the weight. You see, you are subtracting a certain amount of weight from the object. So this means that if you have an object like this, see, moving on a horizontal plane, the normal reaction will be equal to the weight. This is our normal reaction. This is our weight. The normal reaction, the normal reaction will be equal to the weight minus F sine alpha. Minus F sine alpha. This is what's written there. This is what you see there. The normal reaction when you are actually pulling this object will be the weight subtracting this slight amount of weight which is present there. And then what happens to friction? If you are pulling this object and it's moving in that direction, then your frictional force always acts on the opposite direction of where you are pulling. What does this mean now? It means that the frictional force will be equal to F cos alpha. F cos alpha, that is the value of the frictional force. This is exactly what happens when you are pulling an object. When you are pushing it, it's almost the same, right? Almost the same, but there are some differences that you need to understand. When you are pushing it, let me erase this. Let me erase this so I can draw a new structure here. You are in a shopping mall and you have your groceries in a trolley and you are pushing. You see, you are pushing the trolley. This is your trolley. This is your trolley. This is your, this is your what? Your trolley. Pushing your trolley, there's groceries inside. What happens here? Where is this trolley moving? The trolley is moving in that direction. That is where you are pushing it. But where is the force being applied? The force is applied here at a certain angle. Can you see that? It is not applied horizontally, but is applied at a certain angle to that trolley. But then we know that the weight is always vertically down and we have our normal reaction here. However, when you are pushing something, you are indirectly exerting a certain amount of force on it. This amount of force will add up to the weight that you already have there. Right. So this means that I'm actually adding weight. Right. Let us have a space diagram. This is my object, right? I'm applying force at an angle with the horizontal, right? If I'm applying force at an angle with the horizontal, where is this object moving? It's moving in that direction. The object is moving in that direction, forming an angle alpha. But this force F, since it's acting at a certain direction, it is indirectly adding or suppressing more force on this object. Which force will be that? This will be a downward force. So, since this downward force is what? Is vertical, then this will still be V sine alpha. This will be, I mean, F cos what? Cos alpha. Knowing that the object actually has its normal reaction and has its what? Its weight. So what happens to the normal reaction in this case? Since you are adding a certain amount of force onto the weight that you have, this means that your normal reaction will be equal to the weight plus the force which you are exerting, the force which you are indirectly exerting on that particular object. Frictional force remains constant your frictional force remains constant. So basically, this is what we have. When either you are pushing an object or you are pulling an object. Structured here, pulling, you have your normal reaction, your weight, your frictional force, and then you have the pulling force 
that forms an angle alpha with the horizontal, right? And then we have the horizontal force. This is the force that moves this object horizontally, which is F cos alpha. But because you are pulling it, the object will be forced to reduce in weight. And what is that reduction in weight is F sine alpha. Normal reaction, W minus F sine alpha. But when you are pushing it, you are indirectly adding up force. You have your normal reaction, you have your weight, and when you are pushing this particular object, F cos alpha, that is the horizontal movement. But now, F sine alpha now, it's the weight which is added on that particular object. So this means what? The normal reaction will be equal to W plus F sine alpha. Let us look at the summary of our equations so that we understand them. The equations which are marked in red, these are the equations that you know of. These are the equations that we've been dealing with since lesson one and the second lesson we've been doing these equations. Mu, that is the coefficient of friction, is calculated by the frictional force divided by the normal reaction. What is, the no what is frictional force? Frictional force is F cos alpha. Normal reaction depends whether you are pushing it or you are doing what? Or you are pulling it. Frictional force is equal to the a coefficient of friction multiplied by normal reaction. And we also did a look at these equations. Right. This is more or less what you want to expect when you are dealing with a horizontal plane. But then, if you were to extract an equation, you are asked to calculate the pulling force, F. You have a scenario. They give you a scenario, they say an object with a mass M is placed on a horizontal surface. The object is being pulled. The object is being pulled. If the object is being pulled, we know it's going to move that way. F cos alpha, and then we're going to have F sine alpha. The object is pulled at a force what? At a force F, making an angle alpha. And they say to you, Calculate the value of the force F. How to go about extracting that equation knowing that you have frictional force here? You only use the frictional force equation. F is equal to that, right? But what is the frictional force? The frictional force is F cos alpha coefficient. What is the normal reaction when you are pulling this object, okay? The normal reaction when you are pulling this object will be what? will be weight minus F sine alpha. Mathematically, you make F subject of the formula. You know how to go about doing that. You just multiply this one in, transpose F to the other side, take F as a common factor, divide out, and then you're going to have F as subject of the formula. Then you are able to find, to find F. But this is not where we are mostly focused on. But this, this now is where we are mostly focused on. The oblique forces on an inclined plane. Oblique forces on an inclined plane. Oblique forces on an inclined plane. When you're having oblique forces in an inclined plane, same as an inclined plane where this object is expected to just slide um, in, in, in an inclined plane or move up an inclined plane. What do we know about an inclined plane? Is that in an inclined plane, the normal reaction in an inclined plane is not equal to just the weight, but is also equal to the weight component perpendicular to the inclined plane. We spoke about this on our previous lesson. That is also equal to the weight component perpendicular to the inclined plane. Let me see if I can have space here. There. We have our object, we know the weight will always be vertically down, right? We have our weight component perpendicular to the inclined plane theta. This is theta, right? This is theta. This weight component perpendicular to the inclined plane is equal to what? The normal reaction, we said that we have a weight component parallel to the inclined plane. Now, you are pulling this object. Instead of this object just sliding down, in this case, you are pulling it up. 
If you are pulling this object up, normal reaction, you are pulling the object up, you are pulling the object where? Up. This is F pulling. See, we just took this and we transposed it like that. See, it's more or less the same. This means that here we must have what? F cos alpha. Here we must have F sine alpha because you've simply transposed that. And then here we have our angle alpha. So alpha is the angle formed by the pulling or pushing force. Theta is the angle formed by the inclination. You see? Right. Under normal circumstance, on a horizontal plane, we said that NR, the normal reaction, let me erase this. Let me erase this. The normal reaction, when this object is on a horizontal surface, the normal reaction will be equal to W minus F sine. Right? But in this case, what is our normal reaction? Our normal reaction cannot be just W. Because remember, we said that on an inclined plane, the normal reaction is equal to what? W cos theta. So this means that our normal reaction in this one will be W cos theta. But because you are pulling it up, minus F sine alpha. Minus F sine alpha. It's very much important that you understand this because you will not find this equation on a formula sheet. It's not there. Understand the basic concept of it. So if you are pushing it, what happens if you are pushing it? It's going to be normal reaction. If you are pushing it, let me write it like this. This is pulling. This is pulling. This is pulling. Let us look at pushing. How is the equation structured when you are pushing? It will be the normal reaction is equal to W cos theta. This shows that now I'm inclining. This is a language of inclination minus, I mean, sorry, plus. Because you are pushing now, you are adding weight. F sine what? Sine alpha. F sine alpha. What is F sine alpha saying? F sine alpha says there's an additional weight. There's an additional weight which is present there. Right. Where are you pushing this object to? Where are you pulling this object to? Now that is vital. That is very much important to understand before we can go to the next example. It's very much important to understand whether you are pushing this object up, pulling this object up, pulling this object down, or pushing the object down. Right. Let me erase this. Do you remember? In our previous lesson, we said that the minimum force required for the object to move up is given by F up is equal to frictional force plus W sine theta. This is the minimum force required to move the object where? Up. But now the question says, pull the object up. Let's look at this. Let us look at this. When you are pulling the object up, which force says that I'm moving up? Correct. F cos alpha says I'm moving up. Can you see that? F cos alpha says I'm moving up. This is parallel to the inclined plane. It says I'm moving. You are pulling me where? You are using F to pull me up. So I'm moving where? Up. I am moving up. This is what's being shown by that figure there. That I'm moving up. So, this means that in the space of up, we replace up with the force that says I'm moving up. Which force is that? F. The force is F cos alpha. This is the force that says I'm moving up. Right? That is the force that says I'm moving up. Frictional force. How do you calculate frictional force? We know that frictional force is given by that, right? We take that, we put it here. Coefficient of friction, normal reaction. Plus, this plus, the plus says up. If it was down, remember on the previous session, it was down, it was going to be minus. Yes. So this plus says I'm moving up. 
If it was a minus, then it would be moving where? Down. W sine theta. Now we still need to extract this equation further. We really, 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 really need to extract this equation further. Let me give myself space there. Right. As we continue here, now, what is the normal reaction? Because this object is moving up an inclined plane, what is the normal reaction? The normal reaction will be W cos theta. This shows that I'm on an inclined plane. Remember, W cos theta says I'm on where? I'm on a what? Inclined plane. Because you are pulling, this will be minus F sine alpha. It says you are subtracting F sine alpha. That is the force which you are subtracting from the weight. You are subtracting it to where? Up. So from here you have constructed your equation. Calculate the force required to pull the object up an inclined plane that forms an angle of theta. The force of pulling forms an angle of alpha. What do you do? F cos alpha is equal to coefficient of friction W cos theta minus F sine alpha plus W sine theta. This says you are pulling me up. If you are pulling me down, down, if you are pulling me down, this is where, this is pulling where? Up, right? This is PU. Remember, PU means pulling up. And then if you are pulling down, pulling down will be W cos theta minus for pulling F sine alpha down. Down. You remember? Down. This is P pulling where? Pulling down. Pulling down. Let me do this so you can remember this thing. Pulling down. This is PU, right? And this is what? This is PD. Pulling down. Pulling down. This is pulling. Right? This is pulling. If you are pushing, you are pushing, pushing, if you are pushing, let me just make a simple thing. If you are pushing, this is going to be plus. Right? The signs will change. This sign, this negative says pulling. This negative says down. This positive says up. This negative says pulling. If I put a plus here, a plus here will be for what? Will be for pushing. Right? Right. That is simple. Now, let us quickly, quickly look at an example. The example was extracted from a question paper, 2015 question paper, 13 November. You can check it online. Any website that offers question papers, you can check them there. You'd find question papers, but I just extracted this one because it's exactly what I'm looking for. Now the question says, the weight of an object is four ton. 1,000 kg, before we continue, 1,000 kg is equal to one ton. You know that, right? 1,000 kg is equal to one ton. Don't forget that. The weight of an object is four ton, and it rests on an inclined plane of 30 degrees to the horizontal. The coefficient of friction is 0 0.6 for the surface. Let us draw that. We have our object here. This object, I think my marker now is speaking another language. Use this one. The object rests on an inclined plane, right? This object it rests on an inclined plane. We have what? We have weight, we know that. We have weight component. We have normal reaction. What's happening with these markers? We have component. We have parallel to the plane. This one is much better. Parallel to the plane like that. This is what we are given. They said the object has a mass of four 
ton. This means that the object has a mass of 4,000 kg. The object has a mass of 4,000 kg. It rests on an inclined plane, making an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal, right? The coefficient of friction is given, the coefficient of friction is given as 0 0.6, right? So let us sum this up first. The first question says, calculate the force required to pull the object upwards against the slope if the pulling force forms an angle of 20 degrees to the horizontal. We're just going to make 4.2.1 only because 4.2.2 is just the opposite of that one. So the object is what? The object is being pulled up an inclined plane, making an angle of 20 degrees makes an angle of 20 degrees. I know here I have F sine alpha. I know here I have F cos what? Cos alpha. So they want me to calculate the force, this force. Which equation do I use? I'm looking for pulling where? Up. Pulling up the slope. So pulling up the slope would be F cos alpha is equal to coefficient W cos theta pulling minus F sine alpha where up plus F, sorry, plus W sine theta. I want to make F subject of the formula. I want to make F subject of the formula. How do I do that? I multiply in by the coefficient here. If I multiply in with that coefficient, it will be coefficient W cos theta minus coefficient F sine alpha plus W sine theta. Theta. So this F, I can simply transpose it to the other side. It's going to be F cos alpha plus coefficient F sine alpha is equal to coefficient W cos theta plus W sine theta. Taking out F as my common factor here, it will be what? It will be, use a different marker. It will be F into cos alpha plus coefficient sine alpha alpha is equal to coefficient w cos theta plus w sine theta. Now I divide both sides by this one now so that it can be removed. Divide both sides. This means that f will be equal to coefficient cos theta plus w sine theta divided by cos alpha plus coefficient sine alpha. Then you substitute your values. You put in your values there. You put your coefficient of friction, 0 0.6, your theta, which is 30, your weight component, which is 4,000, 4,000, your weight is 4,000 kg, multiplied by 9.8, multiplied by sine 30, divided by cos 20 plus 0 0.6 sine 20, you find the value of your answer there. That's it, folks. Uh, this brings us to the end of our lesson today. I hope you understood everything. And if you have questions, you want to make follow-up, remember our social network um, tags. Uh, the website is www.ehlanzenicollege.co.za. Or you can check us on Facebook, Ehlanzeni Tivet College, uh, YouTube, Ehlanzeni Tivet College, or on Twitter, which is at Ehlanzeni Tivet. That's it for me today. Let's meet on our next lesson.